What's up everyone, Pritch here, and I could not be more happy and proud of how Amazon is deciding to bounce back and address and tackle all these problems that have been plaguing New World. Um, so in literally two days ago, I made a video going over the bugs and, and how I plan on moving forward. And in that I asked and said, you know, how I would like to see Amazon respond is I would like to see some sort of post or something along the lines of, um, them looking back and addressing everything that's been going on, share with us their side of the, the equation, share with us what they've been dealing with and, and working on on their end, kind of backwards looking. And I said, obviously, we're going to want to see the bugs fixed and then patched and all that fun stuff. And then I said, I would also think it would be it would be nice uh, for the community if they created a forward looking into the future. Here's what we have planned. Here's what we're going to do. We're not lying down and dying. We're here to make this game great kind of thing. And within two days now, they have done all three of those things. Literally all three. Patch 105 is out with a bunch of bug fixes. Just an absolute load of bug fixes along with quality of life updates. I already have that YouTube video out. Check it out if you guys haven't already seen. It's a huge game-changing patch. All right? In a great way. <laughs> Um, two, they've already released their forward looking, their into the future with wars, with territory standing, with PvP open world flagging and the changes they plan on implementing in the future with uh, making all that stuff, make it all great again, you know. Um, so they've already done the future looking post and we've already got a YouTube video out about that. And now we have the final piece, the backwards looking, the hey guys, there's been a lot of stuff going on, let's just talk about it, and let's talk from the perspective of the Amazon Game Studio side of things, all right? So that is what this video is right here today. We have an update on current issues, and this is basically the community manager um, just talking with us about what's been going on on their side with all the different bugs and game modes and yada, 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 right? So without further ado, let's dive into it. Hey adventurers, since launch, the team has been working hard to gather, investigate, and address issues surfaced by our players. We know how much players care and we resolve to be more transparent and communicate more frequently about how we're addressing issues. Just absolutely beautiful. I, 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 I love it. it. Like, oh my goodness, yes! To begin, we want to provide an update on issues we believe are most critical to our community. Character transfers. It is important to us that everyone has the opportunity to choose which server they are playing on. Absolutely. By the time you're reading this, character transfers will have been re-enabled and most players should be able to move their characters. Excuse me, I just had a bunch of chicken wings and I feel good. If you have questions about transfers, please visit the facts post here. We are committed to making sure our community is satisfied with where they're playing long term. We will continue to monitor your feedback after this wave of character transfers is complete and offer additional transfers if needed. We're also working on region to region character transfers, but it's difficult to solve and will take time. They are looking to do region to region transfers at some point in the future. That is huge, great step forward, and thank you for telling us that, all right? The rest of this was kind of like, eh, we're, we're still doing character transfer stuff, not, not too much info there. The, the region to region is gonna mean a lot to a lot of people. Full server status. In an effort to ensure that folks actively playing characters on a server are not competing in queue with, a, with new players, we have implemented a full server status to prevent new characters from being created. We monitor the active users on each world and ensure that the full server status continues to be accurate. We understand this may mean that new players are not able to play with their established friends and that some worlds are not receiving the volume of new players that other servers may. And this can have a variety of impacts. We continue to monitor the situation and will make real-time adjustments accordingly as well as provide a 24-hour notice before a server is marked as full. For those curious, um, Full just means like that, that essentially you can't make new characters on there anymore. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you cannot transfer to a server that's already full as well. I'm almost positive that's the way they have their server transfers set up. Um, again, not like a ton of new info here. It's basically just saying, hey, it's going on. We recognize it. Um, 
it's almost like kind of the world we live in, right? Like servers only, the game is only created to have so many people playing in the world, right? Um, that's how they've developed the game. So servers need to have a capacity to it. Otherwise, the game gets broken at a fundamental level because there's not enough resources and or there's too many people trying to do X, Y, Z sort of thing. Um, so all that said, we get it. You're working on on ways to make it better kind of thing because obviously people want to play with friends. That's like the number one reason you play video games. Uh, I shouldn't say the number one reason you play. That is like the number one way to make video games more fun is playing with friends. Well, like basically every time. Um, economy and deflation. We have <laughs> big old topic. Let's go. We have seen a lot of feedback on the game's economy and wanted to share a recent update we posted in the forums. First, we want to start with our goals. We want a player-driven economy with minimal NPC interaction where gold is valuable to all players, even end game players. Touching on the current state of the economy, from a data standpoint, the economy is performing within acceptable levels. All servers are creating more money than is being removed, and by a good margin. However, the economy is tighter at the end game currently. When we look at surplus income generated by level, it's very high in the 1 to 35 level range, decent in the 40 to 59 range, and gets narrow at 60. This means that as more players get to level 60, this will start to put more pressure on the economy. They have two little infographics here. Let me, let me pop the first one open. We have on the bottom the date, so time. On the top, we have uh, um, daily in-out balance. I am not 100% what that means exactly, but I'm going to assume it's saying the amount of gold being put into the server sort of thing, like uh, on... on October 3rd, um, 1.54 or 1.549 million gold was created in the server. Maybe this is all servers. I'm not, I'm not a hundred. I would assume probably all servers. Um, so, and then if we look to, uh, what's, what's probably the lowest point honestly, October 20th might be the lowest point uh, around, uh, 500 million was lost in, like net, um, total gold, gold earned versus total gold spent. And again, you can earn gold in a million ways. You can kill ads, you can do expeditions, outpost rush, uh, you know, portal farming, you can, um, sell stuff on the trading post, you know, get it, uh, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and then gold getting taken out is like you spend money to craft, you spend money to, um, you know, create things, you spend money on the trading post and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, some money goes to taxes, some money goes to creating, uh, settlements and, you know, there's, you know, anything that is not given directly to another player, some of that money is getting taken, obviously, especially when you consider crafting. Um, all right. So all that, all that fun jazz aside, uh, it looks like we have a downward trajectory and they're basically saying, Hey, we will monitor this and adjust gold rates if needed kind of thing. Uh, and then let's look at the second one. Oh, here we go. Yeah. This would have been, this is way easier. Gold in gold out. Um, literally there's just flat out more gold being put in every day than gold out for the most part for the most part um it is also pretty funny that these uh kind of like are parallel with one another when there's more gold being put in every day um those days tend to have more gold out as well so there's obviously a correlation there tends to be a correlation it looks like excuse me again the chicken wings the above charts show the difference between gold that comes into the economy and the gold that goes out. Players are constantly generating a positive gold balance every day, but there is downward trend. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about talking about taxes and crap like that. Screw taxes. Um, if trend can or like house taxes and stuff like that. <laughs> um, if this trend continues and we get closer to a negative in out, we will take action. Our goal isn't to drive this value to zero or make it so no one can amass wealth. We want to ensure that overall gold balance per server stays in check. So coin remains important. Thank you. That's a good forward thinking. We don't want it to be zero. 
Um, there are two big changes that will help the endgame economy. One happened last patch, and one just happened. The first is fixing Azoth Staff Bug. This will allow players to complete high-level corrupted breaches, which generate good gold per hour. Agreed, it's actually one of the best gold per hours. Second, we just turned Outpost Rush back on. Heck yeah, it did. Outpost Rush is a great source of income and will really help endgame players. We want to see the impact these fixes have before we'd make other large changes. Uh, the gold per hour in Outpost Rush for um, winning or losing is tends to be around 30, or sorry, tends to be around 300 gold per 30 minutes. Um, so 600 gold in an hour. It's not the best way to make gold, um, but it is a good way to make gold. And frankly, it's really fun. On top of making gold, you're also getting watermarked things. So it has a duality purpose to it. And you're practicing your PvP. Who doesn't like that? Um, we also want to remind everyone that there is a big gold bonus 10 times. Like... Uh, 10x the amount of gold for your first three faction missions each day. If I remember correctly off the top of my head, I think you get somewhere close to 500 to 750 gold if you do three faction missions every day. I'm not 100%, don't quote me on that, and if somebody knows actually what it is, it, let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, if you guys aren't doing it already, do three faction missions a day. Just, I don't care which ones, just do them. Um, this isn't well communicated in the UX, so we're working to improve that. Make sure you run three faction missions each day to help your personal gold balance. Way ahead of you, I already said it. Boom! In our November major release, not a weekly patch, we have a slew of economic-focused updates and bug fixes aimed at improving the current state of the economy. General fixes include reduced durability loss from PvP deaths by 10%. Beautiful, love it. Um, we already talked about that in the patch notes, though, so I'm not going to go over that too much. Extended housing tax periods from five days to seven days without increasing the tax amount. Thank you. It is incredibly frustrating that we're taxed every five days. I'm really happy to see that change. Thank you. Again, the wings. <laughs> they, I got the hot sauce. Um, reduced attribute respec coin cost by 60%. I, again, amazing. We covered this in the patch notes already, though, so I'm going to kind of breeze through that. But yes, it's going to help the economy a lot with players' gold income and Azoth because of what you guys are going to do with the Azoth stuff. Reduce the quantity of honey gain from... Lord knows I can't say that word right, so I'm going to call it appear, appear is <laughs> by 50% and the amount of milk from cows by 65%. Honey trees are unaffected by this change. We made this change because the volume of milk and honey in the world is higher than our initial estimates. The bees and cows are happy with this change. I mean, frankly, as long as the bees and cows are happy, you have, you have the approval of PETA and that's really what matters in this world. No, I love, uh, I'm totally fine with that. It, it is, you can get honey from like there's so much honey in the economy right now it's insane and there's so much milk in the economy right now that it's insane that i'm totally fine with you guys uh knocking it by 50 percent and i'm by the way uh i'm assuming the a pair whatever the frick that word is a peris a peris um that's just like in towns there's the honey right it's it's that it's the honey that you get in inside the, all the towns um, all trading posts will be linked. This change was made... By the way, these are um, not current patch 1.0... These are not all current 1.0.5 patch changes. These are what they are planning on do rolling out through the month of November. Okay? So don't confuse that with like, oh wait, this isn't in the game right now. No, this is what they're planning on doing in the in, throughout November. Alright? If you want to know exactly what's happening right now, today, in 1.0.5 patch notes, check out my 1.0.5... Uh, patch notes video. Um, all right, here we go. All trading posts will be linked. This change was made to strengthen the economy's less traveled territories and ensure item availability in all territories. This is a big change. And there's going to be people that hate it and there's going to be people that love it. Frankly, I I kind of think it's healthier overall for the, for the economy and it's going to make the majority of players' lives easier. 
Um, that said, it's going to suck for the people that own Everfall and Windsward because you guys were making a boatload of money on the taxes and all the other companies were not. <laughs> so, um, understandably, if you were a major player with Everfall and Windsward, this is going to be unfortunate for you and your company. Um, for everybody else, this is probably going to be a nice boost for them. Um, as well, just as like a common normal player, you can now access everything from the trading post from every city. You don't have to fast travel to Everfall or Windsward to get the goods you want or need. Everything will be in server wide, right? It's not like, oh, if I want the best priced uh, blueberries, I got to fast travel to Everfall. Otherwise, if I try and pay for it in Morningdale, I'm going to be spending three times as much. No, every single blueberry pricing is in every single trading post. That's what they're talking about. Fees for buy and sell orders are defined by the settlement that you're posting them from. Well, maybe I'm a lot. Oh, no, no, fees, fees. For so like the taxes, the taxes. Okay, so for the taxing, it's still gonna matter then. Transaction taxes on purchases you make are defined by the settlement in which you're making the purchase. So it okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I misspoke when I was talking about the trading post being linked then and how that was gonna be af being affected with the settlements in each settlement place. Okay, I'm gonna read through all these first. Before I continue, items listed in sell orders that expire are returned to the settlement from which they are posted. It is no longer possible to place items on the trading post for 28 days. The maximum is now cut in half to 14 days. Okay, so with the first two in particular, fees for buy and sell orders are defined by the settlement that you're posting them from. Transaction taxes on purchases you make are defined by the settlement in which you are making the purchase. So... It looks like you can access any and everything from the uh, from any settlement. So that part is correct. The taxes that are applied to your transactions, whether you are putting stuff on the market or taking stuff off the market, are going to be relative and different depending on what settlement you're in and what those settlement taxes are. So that's what it's sounding like for, for that fun stuff. And if I'm misunderstanding, let me know in the comments. But I believe that's what it's saying. Um, so it is still going to matter from a money perspective where you are buying and selling. But it's going to matter not based on, you know, um, who put the blueberries where. But based on what are the taxes in this settlement. So basically the lowest tax settlement is technically the highest profit for people that are trying to play the trading post market. Um, have fun with that companies fight. <laughs> um, we are amping the potency of expeditions by doing the following increased coin gained from expedition bosses, starting at Starstone barrows by 25% and ramping up the end game expeditions by 100% per boss. Beautiful. I love it. They need, um, the expeditions are pretty much tank and spank with, minor 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 mechanics the funny thing is i actually just did lazarus last night uh the garden of genesis actually has some mechanics on each boss i, I actually kind of enjoyed the garden of genesis thought it was pretty cool um lazarus is just tank and spank like both both bosses are tank and spank there's there's not mechanics right so um one, I would love to see more mechanics in expeditions, uh, make them more difficult, please. Uh, not just like, hey, don't get hit one time with a spear for 12k kind of thing, you know. Um, and I love the fact that you are increasing rewards in the expeditions, especially coin. Reduced the coin cost for each of the tuning orbs and increase the corrupted shards players earn from minor and major corrupted breaches. Beautiful. I love it. Um, thank you. Frankly, anything that you guys do that make tuning orbs better and easier to make, huge benefit to the community because I do think expeditions can be very enjoyable. It's fun five-man content you can do with buddies. And uh, obviously, you get great loot um, because each time you kill a boss, you increase your watermark. So, heck yeah, especially for people for leveling. Um, thank you for the changes. I, I, I would be interested to kind of know exactly how much you're reducing the coin costs and exactly like how much more, how many more shards we're going to get. Um, but I'm assuming it's just by a little bit. 
Uh, reduced coin cost of chisels by 20 to 50% depending on tier. I did cover this in the patch notes for 105 today. Um, basically, chisels are what you buy from the faction vendors to create tuning orbs, um, and they are pricey, and now they're going to be less pricey. Thank you. Um, we're fixing a few bugs. Repair kits should help crafters with a new item to sell, as well as lowering repair costs. Thank you very much. So for those that aren't, oh, I'll read the two. We fixed an issue that was causing the attribute perk mods to not be usable in crafting repair kits. We fixed an issue that was causing y using repair kits to cost coins. Repair kits should only cost coin in the process of being crafted. Thank you. I talked about this again in the patch notes video. I'll, I'll cover it real fast here. Repair kits are used to repair your gear. At the end game, it takes like 500 gold to fully repair all your all your stuff. It costs a lot of gold, right? Repair kits are supposed to be the cheaper way of doing that, um, where you know you you get an item that's going to repair everything, uh, and you don't have to pay gold when using the repair kit. Um, before this change. It costs gold to use the repair kit, and it basically made it worthless to use the repair kit. There was no reason to do it. You would just hit repair all or, you know, right-click and hit repair because it was going to cost you gold either way, so who cared, right? There was no point in, in getting uh, a repair kit. Now there's going to be a point. They're going to be huge. Use them. And it's going to save you gold over time. We are moving on to the economy exploits and coin farming. Economy exploits and coin farming. Regarding coin and item dupes, we apologize for disabling the player trading economy. Wow, they apologized for that. I actually, that's, thank you. Thank you. Players found a coin item dupe bug when players trading were exploiting it heavily. They will be penalized for that behavior. Thank you. We took immediate steps to mitigate the long-term economic impact by disabling trades in the short term while we worked on addressing the root cause. It was not a decision that was made lightly, but we feel the ability to trade and improve settlements is important. It's literally the backbone. It's the economy. And fun aspect of our game we aim to preserve. We have permanently banned players who exploited the coin item dupe issue. For those that aren't, uh, weren't aware, quick little... Um, people were duping all over the place, M markets were getting flooded with items and coin, um, and the, uh, Amazon decided we're going to disable all wealth transfers, which means nobody was able to use the trading post, nobody was able to trade money whatsoever, nobody was able to do jack squat. That implemented a new bug where company owners could actually, uh, dupe gold on accident, which it kind of seems like might be a part of this next paragraph, so I'll just read this one. In our efforts to mitigate this issue, we inadvertently in introduced a new issue that enabled coin duplication via territory upgrades. We addressed this as well in our uh, next hotfix, where we re-enabled trading and company transactions, as well as remove any duped coin from companies who exploited the issue or accidentally triggered it. Good to know. They tracked it, and they're going to get rid of the duped, the duped money beautiful i am a little concerned if companies duped money and then gave it to their people and then those people put it into the economy or markets or whatever i would be interested to see exactly how that worked but or works but um but yeah we'll, we'll see uh, we are able to track how much coin was received from exploitive behavior and we investigate and take remediation steps against companies that have egregiously exploited this. We understand the frustration caused by trades being off and want to make sure that no one suffers in-game financial losses as a result from disabling wealth transfer methods. In the long term, if town maintenance is behind on a territory your company owns or if you're unable to afford your taxes due to this, we will provide... A make good. That's pretty vague. I'm not going to lie. A lot of that was pretty vague. Like, people did it, and we can track it, and we'll do stuff, uh, and we'll get rid of some of the coin, and we're dealing with people that did it egregiously. And, um, you know, we fixed it, basically, and... Uh, if people are struggling, we'll we'll give them stuff. A lot of that's very vague, right? Like that's a, a lot of that's super vague. But I do appreciate that you're addressing it and at least just letting us know, like, hey, it's on the radar and we're this is what we're doing, kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't mind a few specifics, but that's all right. I'll live. On the topic of coin farming, we know many of you have seen the annoying chat messages from players. Spamming gold sales. Yeah, it's all over anyone's general chat. Good thing I never look at that thing. And by the way, it's not even that. 
I've probably had 20 different companies reach out to me wanting to do ads on my YouTube videos that are literally all gold like selling websites. I'm not even kidding. There's so many websites that are doing this. Um, we know many of you have seen the annoying chat messages from players spamming gold sales, and we're continuing to investigate solutions to this issue. Many coin sellers were creating new characters and transferring money to other accounts. To combat this, our weekly patch will include, one, banned and suspended many of the reported accounts as well as bot accounts that were ha that were holding gold. Thank you for the reports for players spamming chat. All right, they're listening. Keep reporting. Two, added restrictions to prevent player-to-player -player trading and currency transfer account. Oh my goodness, I can't read. Added restrictions to prevent player-to-player -player trading and currency transfer from characters under level 10 or whose account is less than 72 years old. Logging in after your account is 72 years old will enable your ability to trade and transfer currency once you hit level 10. We kind of covered this a lot in the patch notes, so if you want my thoughts on that, you can listen there. Um, basically, I've, to me, this kind of just sounds like um, hackers and exploiters and dupers and botters just need to think three days in advance. Um, like, just get your characters to level 10 and then think three days in advance kind of thing. Because um, you can just make the character, and then once it's 72 hours old, then you can just do your duping thing, it looks like. Um uh, Redistributed coin value from some early quests to later in the main storyline quest, keeping the total amount of coin earned the same, just delivered in quests slightly later. Um, I covered this again in the patch notes because this is in the 105 patch notes, but uh, basically, I'm not 100% sure that's going to do too much, um, but I do understand that you guys are trying to generate less gold income in the early game and more gold income in the later game and this is one avenue that you guys have chosen to do this in um, trading post usage will be restricted until new characters accept the introduction to trading post quest in their first settlement again uh, in the patch notes already for 105 but for this um, this is the quest where it tells you to go check out a storage shed and go check out the trading post which happens extremely early on once you get into your first settlement um, so you can get this you can get this very quickly um, but yeah, maybe this might, maybe this combats the new bots that are instantly into the game and doing trading post stuff or doing whatever, right? Um, outpost rush in a live environment at scale. We identified a rare issue that places players in limbo where they are neither in the world or in an outpost rush session. Solving this character state is very manual and time consuming and we have not been able to reproduce the issue in internal testing. We are working on solutions to prevent the issue but it has not been an easy fix. Frankly, I was not aware of this problem whatsoever. It hasn't affected me. I've never heard of anybody having this problem. So that's super interesting. I'm learning about this for the first time right now. We did a cautious rollout to monitor for this issue to appear. If you have an issue with UI appearing improperly during Outpost Rush, you can do a hard restart to resolve the issue permanently. If your character gets immobilized or stuck between the world and Outpost Rush, please submit a ticket to our support team to get unstuck. Getting this running smoothly is a top priority for the team. Outpost Rush is an important aspect of late game gameplay and economy. Beautiful. I love it. I'm glad you guys are on, on top of it and, and trying to fix it even though you said it's going to be a lot of work. Good. Client side authority. This is a, a big back and forth that's been happening with the community. Uh, a lot of Josh Drive Hayes videos talking about the uh, client side versus server side stuff and how a lot of it looked like it was client side authority. And then uh, Amazon has released some things explaining, no, it's not actually client side authority, even though the bugs made it seem that way. So I believe this is probably going to be an even bigger, uh, up, not update, but like a summary of all that that's been going on. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. I don't know anything about coding, by the way, before I start reading all this. I don't know jack squat. I don't under, like, so, you know, understand that I am not going to be the end all be all of information when it comes to client side authority versus server side authority. Um, I just have the general understanding that you want to keep most stuff server side because clients... Because client side, people are either too stupid and will break stuff that you couldn't have expected them to break, or they're too smart and they'll break stuff that you couldn't have expected them to make, and both are bad. Um, there was a recent bug in New World that drove some speculation on how our simulation works. The bug was addressed quickly, but both the speculation and the bug deserve some clarity and explanation. This is like verbatim, by the way, what I asked for was... was 
clarification and open communication. I'm so happy. You guys are doing an amazing job. Continue doing this. This is great. To be very clear, New World is not client authoritative. From a simulation standpoint, New World is entirely server-based. At a high level, the model is this. Clients dispatch controller inputs to the server, and the server then checks that input for limits that might invalidate it. Then, if accepted uses... Then, if accepted, uses it as an input to a character, actor is the internal name that they use, within server memory. Physics and game rules are then run entirely server side, and the outcome is sent back to the original client. Clients will then draw the outcome determined by the server. So what it, what it sounds like, uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep reading. Take the example of a player swinging a sword against an opponent. To the player, they hit a button and the sword swings, which might seem very client-based. What actually happens is more complex. The player hits a button, a message is dispatched to the server saying, I pressed a button for a swing. And at the same time, the client starts drawing the visual of swinging the sword on the player on the player display on your monitor. This part is strictly graphical and has nothing to do with the simulation. The server doesn't even know about this graphical representation and hears no information other than the button uh, press itself. When the input reaches the server, it is checked to see if it's possible, and then the server begins animating an entirely server-side version of the skeleton for the character with a swing. This is not an approximation or a bounding volume version of the skeleton. It's actually fully detailed, being fully animated, so we can have precision that if the sword just barely touches the opponent, that is consistent between server and what client perceives as possible. If the result of this... Hold on. If the result of this entirely server-based animation is a hit, then that result is sent back to the client. Otherwise, a miss... It's important to note that only after the server has performed the animation and that results in the sword intersecting is this considered a success. We don't shortcut or roughly compute this. We do full physics detail for all such actions. Upon receiving the outcome, either hit or miss, the client will adjust its visual display to match what the server has determined. There are some client-side tricks we use here to stretch the animation while the client is waiting for the server answer, but the outcome is always based on based only on the server answer. This same pattern applies in combat and other precise physics simulation interactions. So uh, the last paragraph looks like they're going to talk about the bug. Um, as a uh, not computer savvy person or tech savvy or coding or whatever, basically what I just got from that is I press a button. It, uh, that um, button press is sent to the server, to the new world server, and it's me saying to them, I want to do something. I want to, I want to reap. I want to do an auto attack, whatever on the server. It like draws out, uh, me doing that action and then decides on the server. He has hit this. He has missed this. This reap will pull these four things or has made contact with these four things. And then once the server decides, Yes, that is what's going to happen. You have hit, you have missed, you've whatever. Then it sends that info back to my computer, to the client, and then that's what I see happening. And it's happening very quickly, obviously, because everything happens within, you know, milliseconds and whatnot. Um, that's kind of how I understand this process to work from reading that. If I am wrong or if somebody thinks that I have misinterpreted that, let me know in the comments. Um, we did have a bug in which, given certain circumstances, we were waiting server-side on input from a client before processing through to outcomes. Combined with an intentional weapon effect that allows for brief invulnerability, dodging or evading, 
evades on reap, by the way. This created a situation where players could reach an invulnerable state and prolong it by making the client unresponsive through moving in a windowed form, basically. Uh, or at least that's what I saw in all the videos. Uh, even though the client has no say in damage, both damage the player creates and damage taken by the player are computed server side based on the results of physics simulation plus game rules. This was a particularly bad bug given our server-based simulation, and we apologize for that. We corrected the bug in code the same day we learned about it, then tested it to make sure nothing unintended came out of those changes, and published the fix immediately after that. Thank you for apologizing. Thank you for explaining the way it works. The open communication is a huge step forward. Thank you. Moderation. It is important to us that New World be a fun, inclusive, and safe place for everyone in our community. We have seen several issues arise regarding in-game moderation that we want to address. First, we do enforce our code of conduct. As players report violations they see in-game, those reports go to a queue to be reviewed by our moderation team. No player reports are moderated without a person reviewing the details of the report. That's huge. A lot of people were speculating that it was purely a uh, computer-ran thing in a lot of cases. It, this is them saying, no, they have a real human that looks at it for every single report. Our team can make mistakes, and we're continuing to train up uh, our growing army of moderators. I appreciate that last statement. It's true. There are, for those that aren't aware, Amazon Game Studios is run by humans, by people. We are imperfect beings. We will mess up, and they are no different, and they are just acknowledging that. Thank you. Moderation can, uh, moderation can and has been weaponized as a warfare tactic where people try to permanently, you know, right before a war, they try to permanent, they try to ban, not permanently ban, they try to ban or get a, you know, 24 hour ban or whatever on their enemies, essentially. That's what they mean by weaponizing it. The pattern of behavior is that two ri oh they explain it nice. The pattern of behavior is that two rival groups will have confrontations in chat prior to a war or big fight. These groups try to goad one another into code of conduct violations. Man, when's the last time you heard someone use the word goad? Try to trick or antagonize. I love it, dude. <laughs> then eagerly report one another when violations occur. Those violations receive multiple reports, are reviewed by a moderator, and if there is a legitimate violation then suspense, then just oh, suspensions are issued. Well, I don't know why that was a hard word. Again, these suspensions nailed it are not driven by the volume of reports, but by the legitimacy of the violation. You see that? So number is not size is not what matters. They're doing quality over quantity. It's what's in the reports that they care about more than the quantity of the reports, at least according to this post. We also take advantage of automated systems such as easy anti-cheat to detect and remove folks who are using cheats and exploits. This process is data-driven and automated. All right. They have an automated anti-cheat. Good to know. Interesting. Um, that's all we're getting on that, by the way. So that's, that's, that's the full extent of the information on the anti-cheat stuff. Um, war lag. War is a critical feature of New World. So many other systems in the game benefit from claiming and holding territories. Absolutely. This is like, this is your big, your, this is your big thing. War also creates fun and dramatic gameplay moments that are exciting for players and exciting for our team to watch. I agree. It's, it's really fun content to play in and really fun to watch, honestly. Um... You guys should check out Wars if you haven't, or if you haven't gotten a chance to play in them, you should definitely check out some Wars. I have a bunch that I have posted to my channel. Some wins, some losses, all fun. But the elephant in the room is the exploits that have been plaguing this feature. In particular, the now common practice of spamming the Ice Gauntlet, Fire Staff, or Life Staff in order to create latency problems while capturing control points. It's, it's hell. Literally, literally. As soon as there's a bunch of people or a bunch of magic users in and around a point, everybody stops moving. I should not in reality. In reality, everyone's actually moving and doing stuff, but on your screen, nobody's moving, everything's frozen, and you're literally just guessing, throwing everything out, just hoping you're actually hitting real people, kind of thing. Because, like, you still will get hit even if you can't see anything, and you are still hitting other people even if you can't see them. It's. Pretty freaking insane. 
Um, and this is what is just plaguing wars and making them not fun. Um, we've made some initial changes here that are uh, that were achievable in short development cycles, and we're working on further updates with higher impact that need longer testing to preserve balance. As stated, as we stated from the start, war is a focal point of New World, and your feedback on its design and gameplay is important to us. We will continue to explore war's design in an upcoming dev blog. I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. I, I just want, like, my personal two cents, I actually really love the structure of war. I think you guys did an amazing job. I think 99% of people that ever go into a war can admit that was actually really fun. Um, the problem is not with the wars, but again, with the, with the lag, it like, so address the lag and make sure that never happens. You're golden. The only other concerns tend to come in from, uh, weapons like the hatchet, for example, over the last week that have been bugged and doing way more than they should in damage or armor mitigation. That's mitigating too much. Or like, so things that are outside the wars that are affecting the wars, right? Like bugged armor, bugged perks, um, bugged weapons, that kind of stuff. That, those are the things that will really screw with people's uh, enjoyment of wars. So I would also take a good look at those as well. Especially when thinking about wars. Invasion difficulty and participation. On the Magmo server, no one has won an invasion yet. At best, we've gotten to like the three and a half minute mark, I believe. Um, it gets insane starting around five and six minutes. Like every single gate gets like four champions. And as soon as there's like two Spriggans in play, everyone is hardcore panicking. Because Spriggans like three shot doors. It's insane. And they also one tap anybody that's playing like literally they one tap anybody. They just they one tap any human being. <laughs> Recently, there was some confusion over invasions and how they relate to territory downgrades. How f how far you make into an invasion does not determine how many stations will be downgraded if you fail the invasion. There were a lot of people that thought that. Thank you for clarifying that. The number of downgrades your territory will incur if you fail are tied directly to the territory level of your settlement. The higher your territory level, the more downgrades you will incur if you fail. Successfully repelling an invasion will ensure that no upgrades are, are regressed. Individually, you will be more likely to get better awards the more you contribute to your team. So, contribute to your fort's defense and make sure you're giving Corrupted all you've got. We're keeping an eye on the tuning of invasions and we appreciate the feedback we're re we've received so far on this feature. Um, I'm going to read the additionally real fast before I give my comment to that. Additionally, we have seen two, uh, we have seen two sides to an argument on invasion participation. On one hand, governing companies want to determine 100% of the participants defending against an invasion. On the other hand, players being removed from invasions feels like it's, uh, it is abuse of an existing game mechanic to exclude more players from joining. We understand both perspectives and the team is investigating solutions. All right, so I'm gonna before I address this, I'm gonna go back to addressing. You get better rewards the more you contribute to your team. Here's my concern: you need people to perform tasks that are not going to translate to scores in invasions. You need people on turrets. You need people shot calling. You need people that are doing CC style mechanics, such as grouping ads, um, such as applying rends with spear or hatchet or warhammer or whatever, applying rends. Um, by the way, for those that don't know, rending monsters, rending the champions, the brutes, the spriggans, the uh, generals, the priests, that is how you kill those ads quickly. It is vital. Players that don't run Ice Gauntlet Fire Staff or Great Axe are still extremely valuable, but it's not going to translate to scores in invasions. So that is my concern with the um, you get better rewards for your contribution. I'm just going to throw that out there as a concern I have. I'm not saying I have a better solution or a better way to do it. But that is unfortunate for people that want to help be a little more supportive. Or maybe you want to go a full con build and run a bunch of taunts to try and get the large monsters to focus you instead of the doors. 
um, even though that seems really buggy right now. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, they don't seem to follow you very well. All right, enough of that. The two-sided argument. Um, currently, the system is companies that own the territory are allowed to select 10 of the 50 people that are allowed to be in the invasion. You can select 20% of, of the total uh, people inside. The other 40% are randomly generated by just whoever is uh, signed up. Literally, as long as you're signed up, you get a ticket or you get a chance to be pulled in. So what's happening is... People are signing up. Let's say you have 100 people signed up. Um, let's say we're purple and we have uh, over 50 purple that have signed up. There's 30 yellow signed up and there's 20 green signed up. Um, the invasion pulls in uh, 15 yellows and 5 greens. What everyone does is if it's your territory and you're purple, you once everyone gets pulled in, kick the 20 that are not purple and then you get another random drawing of new people and you keep all the ones that are purple. You kick the rest and you keep cycling over and over and over again until you have 50 purple people in the invasion. That's currently how the system is, is being, uh, that's currently how it's designed. That's currently how companies are trying to get around it. Um, essentially they're saying, look, we see and hear you people, there, there are good, and I agree, there are good arguments on both sides for A, letting a company choose when it's their town, their, uh, you know, their work benches that are going to get downgraded, right? They should be able to choose their people, the best people they think for the job. I hear the other side of the argument as well. Um, this is a fun game mode. If companies choose, the same people are going to do it over and over and over and over again, which is currently kind of what's happening with wars. Um, and then other people outside of those, you know, companies and systems aren't having a chance to do this content. Um, and I, I don't know what the right answer is. Frankly, I, I don't. I would love to know in the comments if you guys think you have a great idea for it. They are working on it and they're looking at it. All right. Patch sket hole leak. This is a gigantic freaking post, and this is going to be a gigantic freaking YouTube video. Good lord, I'm probably going to want to put timestamps in this bad boy. All right, patch schedule and downtimes. Our goal is to deliver weekly patches in addition to our major releases that address bugs, balance, and more. I love it. These patches and releases require server downtime. Following launch, our downtimes were taking place during EU primetime, and we have also encountered issues which required more downtime than planned or communicated. We understand this is frustrating experience and can create the impression that we favor some regions over other, NA better than EU. No, I'm kidding. I actually do feel really bad for you EU homies. I know you guys have kind of been getting screwed on this stuff. Um... We have been listening to the community feedback and we have been testing a few different time slots to determine the least amount of players affected. When possible, we also do maintenances that go region by region at the respective lowest usage, but this will not always be available for large updates. To ensure that you remain informed, we will provide updates every Tuesday on the status of our weekly patch. We understand that these downtimes may not be opportune for everyone, but we will continue to listen to your feedback and adjust to find a downtime schedule that impacts the fewest players. I appreciate that. Thank you. You are right. There is no time that you could do a server um, maintenance and take the servers down that somebody isn't getting affected, right? So it's a matter of just f figuring out a, a way that you can affect the least amount of people um, and just, a, and you know, for those few people, it's going to suck. Absolutely. For the rest of the world, it's going to be the best case for everybody else kind of thing. We get it. This is the reality of a video game, right? People, a worldwide video game. People play it at all hours of the day. Um, how does luck work? R Ooh, good question, right? Recently, we have received a lot of questions about how luck works in New World. Luck of the general type, as opposed to the types of gathering luck that you will see on something like a sickle or a food buff, affects your chances to roll higher on our list of items that come from enemies and containers like stockpiles. In the case of furniture schematics and found furniture items, the higher end storage items are among the most rare. Increasing your luck will definitely make this more likely to occur, but as with all luck, there is no guarantee you'll get it. 
it, okay, you're doing, again, I want to just praise this entire post. However, did you really just like have a, how does luck work? Well, you see guys, luck increases your chance of getting higher gear and higher tier goodies, but luck does not guarantee the drops. No, sh no, sh we knew that already. We know what luck is. <laughs> we know, we know the definition of luck. <laughs> We're curious. What's the system? Um, is there like a, Everyone's speculating 1 to 100 ratio, and uh, every 1% luck increase is a one, uh, the number 1 on that ratio. So if you have like 25% uh, total additional luck, that's really high. If you have 10% total additional luck, uh, you're more likely to get drops at a, like your, your range without luck is from 0 to 75, your range with 10 with 10 luck is now 10 to 85 kind of thing, right? Where it's like people are speculating how that works number wise. That's what we want to know. We want to know how it actually works. We don't want you to tell us what luck is. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't get anything from that paragraph. If somebody else did, maybe let me know. But um, that was a little, that was a little underwhelming compared to the rest of this stuff. That said, the whole post is incredible. I love it. Keep it up. Fishing chests. Due to an issue with botting, we have removed the amount of gold you receive in fishing chests. We understand the impact this has on the incentives and rewards for fishing, and we will continue to explore opportunities to make fishing a rewarding experience for our players. You do not get gold from fishing chests anymore. Interesting. And this is their way to combat bot fishers, because bot fishers would just fish a lot, and then you make gold off that interesting did not did not think of that interested to see what that means for fishing moving forward obviously uh, th frankly it's a nerf that's what it is but i don't know how big of a nerf that is perks and gems there are currently many issues with how perks and gems are functioning yeah there are there are there are more issues with perks and gems than you have perks and gems. <laughs> like, like, there are more issues than there are actual perks and gems. For example, the resilient perk is granting damage absorption instead of critical hit damage absorption. And it's been doing that since the betas, I'm pretty sure. The team is looking into this situation as this is not intended behavior, obviously. When we have a fix for it, we will be adding it to uh, into one of our weekly updates. Our goal is to have all issues with perks solved, excuse me, by our November monthly release. That's awesome. I would love that. Um, that means they're going to take a real hard look at perks over the next couple weeks, guys. So if you have found any bugs or things that they should look at, now would be the time to send them... Uh, Send them notes in game. Send them bug reports. I okay, can notes bug reports. Um, all right. So uh, there are a bunch of perks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The they're saying they're looking at the resilient perk in the 105 patch notes. They actually have said that they have fixed the resilient perk. So this should be fixed uh, in game currently right now at the time of recording this. Um, I'm recording this at like 3.40 in the afternoon Eastern time zone. So like 12.40 Pacific. Um, so the, the 105 patch is already currently out there right now. 250 strength bug. Oh my gosh. So for those that don't know, the 250 strength bug is once you reach 250 strength, your animations on abilities are longer. Your your End animations on abilities such as Reap, Maelstrom, uh, maybe Charge. I don't know if Charge is one. Maybe Gravity Well as well, actually. Um, your end animations take longer. Like, you're stuck in the animation longer before you can do any action such as Dodge or Block or whatever, right? Um, which is actually really, really freaking frustrating as a Strength user myself. Um... There is currently an issue where once your strength attributes reach 250, you can no longer roll. Wait, what? You can no longer roll? I am not aware of that bug. What do you mean you can no longer roll? There, 
I mean, okay, it, by roll, do you mean dodge? You can still dodge. Uh, unless somebody else has a bug that I don't know about. Man, they didn't even address the actual bug that I'm aware of. Okay. <laughs> we'll get back to the 250 strength bug maybe in another video or something. Um, property taxes. We do hear the feedback that property taxes are high and the rate of payment is high. This is by design. Owning three very nice homes in different parts of a tournament is not intended to be easily achievable. We will continue to monitor feedback and data, but we do not see cause for change at this time. Even though you are now changing your system from five to seven days. So you did think that needed changed. Boom. Got him. Um, basically what I just heard is stop complaining <laughs> like they, they literally were like i don't care about your problems you're rich you own three houses deal with the taxes like literally that's what that just said faction tokens faction tokens have been a source of pain for players and we recently improved the situation by addressing a bug where the faction token caps were not increasing after players had completed the rank up quest for their faction we also increased the faction token cap by 50% for each faction tier. We made this change so that players can earn extra tokens even if they've hit the faction reputation cap and want to save up while working to advance to the next faction rank. These were great changes. We've already addressed these in previous videos and, and previous patch notes things. These were a fantastic change and very beneficial. Thank you. World clock bug. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, in update 104, we implemented a mitigation to prevent world time to skip ahead or behind for most worlds, which would subsequently cause a variety of issues across the world. We are unable to replicate this issue internally, and it takes and it is taking longer to fully address than we would like. We're aware of how frustrating this is, and we're going to continue to monitor any future world time skips and work on improving this fix. Basically, they're saying, look, we're trying. We haven't figured out a solution. All right, I can accept that. Thank you for the honesty. Thank you. For those that don't know, this has happened to the Magma server, I think, twice. It, it at least happened once. Uh, basically, randomly, everything in the game will skip ahead like seven days, which means all invasions, all wars, all whatevers that are going on, all instantly get finished. Um, and done and everybody loses everything kind of thing or, or random groups win their war without actually having a war or whatever um, And and everything gets screwed and this actually happened in the magmel server right as I was buying my first house And I'm still gonna complain about this until I get my money back. I bought my first house for 8,000 gold I two minutes later the this world clock bug happened to magmel and then for the rest of my gameplay experience, I couldn't pay the property tax on it no matter how many times I pressed to. And so I couldn't use the house for any reason. So I got rid of the house. Then I rebought the house for 20000 because a different company owned it because our company was in war at the time of the world clock bug. And then after, after the world clock bug happened, we instantly lost the war without the war happening at all. And it went over to the greenies. So I had to pay 20000 So I paid a total of 28000 all because of this stupid bug. And I would like my money back. I would like twenty. I would like 20000 back, please. I am totally fine with the 8000 that I initially paid. I just want my 20000 back. Um, yes, I did rant about it. So what? Sue me. I'm still mad about it. Images in chat. Following the update 104, we discovered an issue where players were able to post images and other links in the chat that resulted in unsavory behavior. I don't know, they were some savory uh, sausages being posted, if you ask me. Uh, we have been able to fix in each region that should resolve this issue and prevent players from abusing and exploiting this feature. Basically, people could post, could post sausages, HTML pictures, whatever you wanted to do. Some people could post a picture that had code in it that you'd hover over like the image or the item or whatever, and your game crashed. That was an interesting one. Crouching bug. We discovered a bug where crouching could produce a healing effect, and if on sacred ground, you could increase the healing effect by crouching. There have been, uh, there's been a mitigation implemented during Thursday's server maintenance, and we will have a permanent fix in an upcoming patch. Basically, you stand in sacred ground or beacon, you spam the crouch button, 
And every single time that you re-crouch, you get the heal. So it just healed like 50 times in like three seconds, essentially. It's like you just spam crouch and you're back to full health in like two in like a blink of an eye. Funnily enough, this exact bug also occurred inside enemy ice storms. If you were in an enemy ice storm and spammed crouch, you would continuously take the damage every single time you press the crouch button. So it was actually a quick way to kill yourself too, which was a, a fun bug. Um, it kind of sounds like they haven't had a huge fix for it. There's going to be a huge fix in an upcoming patch, but they have done something to mitigate this. Interested to see how, if this is still functioning. If you guys know uh, after 105, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how that's progressing. Um watermark system by the way guys how long has this been holy cow this post is like this probably took them two to three hours to make minimum like minimum and actually no this this took a day to make easy because they had to talk to every system people about it watermark system many of you have been asking about the nuances of the high watermark system and i'm here to help if you don't know what the high watermark system does i'm pretty sure this is copy and paste from a different forum post if you don't know what it does it's a system that kicks in when your character reaches level 60 and ultimately governs the power of the gear drops you receive as you venture into more dangerous areas of the world and fight powerful enemies when an enemy or container drops a piece of gear for you it rolls on its gear score during your leveling experience this gear score naturally progresses with your level so long as you're fighting enemies at or above your level you're getting drops that are in a power range that is good for your level when you reach the level cap 60 this mechanic changes a bit at 60 you gain an upper gear score limit watermark high watermark on drops that gradually increases as more powerful drops appear to you this up this upper limit is per item type for armor it is based on the slot type head chest rings etc right so there's head chest gloves pants boots five different armors plus there is jewelry there's earrings there's rings and there's necklaces so there's eight total when it comes to armor and accessories that are all different every single one of those watermarks are different for you um I completely lost where I was. Uh, there we go. Um, and for weapons, it's based on the weapon, which means my watermark for a great axe might be 550, but my watermark for a musket might only be 530. So you will receive different level gear score drops with different watermarks based on the weapons and based on the different armor pieces. So that's super interesting to know. That means it's going to be actually way harder to get everything to be watermarked around 600 for yourself. Only item drops affecting your high watermark. Wait, what? Oh, only item drops affect your high watermark. This means that crafting and buying off the trading post do not affect your watermark. Um, the moment the item drops, your relevant high watermark is increased. You don't even need to pick the item up. That is huge. Everybody that's listening that cares about any of this stuff, you don't need to pick it up. It literally, you don't need to equip it. You don't need to do anything. The moment that it happens, your watermark gets higher. Boom. And I love that system. Thank you. All right. My throat is dying, by the way. Oh my goodness, <clears throat> those hot wings or not something I'm going to eat again before needing to read a bunch of text. <laughs> they are delicious though, in Fort Wayne, buffalo wings and ribs, shout out, you guys are awesome, I love your wings. Um, crafting an item or buying one from the trading post will not give you an increase, but it can be a great way to give yourself an edge in search of more powerful gear in the more dangerous areas of the game. I could not more highly recommend now that resilience and sorry, now that resilient has been fixed, now that that perk no longer reduces all armor or sorry, no longer reduces all damage taken, go to the trading post, buy high level, high watermarked gear that is right for you because it is 
cheap on the trading posts. At least in Magmel they are. You could get a full set of gear, of solid gear. I mean, you could get it as low as 500 gold, and you get it as high as, like, you know, 1500 gold, right? Like, that is nothing for a great set of, like, 580 gear, you know? Get good gear. It is cheap on the trading post. I'm telling you right now. Um... Not because it's going to help your watermark, but because it's just going to help you while you're killing stuff that will help your watermark. Alright. Not all enemies and containers, including event reward containers from Outpost Rush War Invasions, are created, excuse me, are created equal in the case of the high watermark system. While you always have a small chance to see a high watermark increase when defeating a level 60 plus creature or searching a container in a level 60 plus landmark, each level beyond 60 has a soft upper limit on the likelihood of a high watermark increase. Similarly, event reward containers will respect your current high watermark and also have a small chance of increasing it. What this means is that you will likely, sorry, what this means is that while you'll reliably see high watermark increases up to gear score 530 when, le when defeating level 61 enemies, your chances of seeing something beyond gear score 530 from a level 61 enemy is significantly lower than it is from a level 62 enemy. Level 64 plus enemies are capable of reliably dropping gear up to gear score 600. Very interesting. So basically what this means is um, there are enemies ranging from level 60 to level 66 in New World. When it comes to the end game people. Level 61 enemies can reliably get you gear scores up to 530 for your respective watermarks. But then after that, there is a much lower chance of dropping a higher watermark thing. Level 62 ads have a similar thing, except maybe theirs goes up to 550, right? Maybe they're able to reliably get you to 550. Level 63s can maybe reliably get you to 570. Who knows? I don't know where the actual numbers are. But they can reliably get you up to a certain point before they are very low chance of getting what you need. But what that means is any level 64, 65, or 66 location or group of ads or whatever. So we're thinking Merc Guard. We're thinking the Mines and Shattered. We're thinking some Reekwater places um, like the Elite Dungeon area in Reekwater. Um, those have a good chance or don't lose the, the – like don't have that upper cap. Um, of 600 gear. So those can constantly be farmed to get you to 600 kind of thing. Um, 61 levels can only be farmed really up to 530. 62s, you know, up to a certain point. 63s up to a certain point. 64s and beyond, that's the sweet spot. You're always going to get goodies. Or at least have the chance for goodies. The system isn't fully random either. Does it hate me then? Is that what it means? Does the, does the system hate me? <laughs> uh, each time you defeat a level 60 plus enemy and don't receive a gear item that increases your high watermark type, which is all the time for this dude, you're slightly more likely to see an increase the next time. That is a beautiful system that is incredibly rewarding. That means, guys, you should go out there and farm some mobs, all right? Farm some 64 locations. Merc Guard, the mines, uh, Reek Water. Like, go to these high-level... Eden Grove, go to these high-level zones, get a big old group of people, farm a bunch of mobs. Because every time you don't get a drop that is a higher watermark, you're getting a better chance next time. I love that. That's a great system. Additionally, some enemies such as those found in Elite... Uh, landmarks and expeditions have a higher base chance of dropping items that will increase your high watermark. Level 60 plus named enemies are even more likely to drop high watermark increasing items and expedition bosses will always drop an item that increases your high watermark. Since and uh, Garden of Genesis 
and um, Lazarus are the two endgame ones. They both have they both have two bosses, really. They both have two bosses, um, which means you're guaranteed two watermark increases every time you do one of those expeditions. I love that system. Thank you for clarifying. It means expeditions are extremely valuable. And it means that elite zones are extremely valuable. Elite zones, by the way, are any landmark that says that uh, recommends that you bring a party of five. Those are the those are what are considered elite landmarks. Merc guard, the mines. Um, you know, it could be as simple as um, the uh, the stone skull fort thingy in Monarch's Bluff in the southwest corner. Those are all elite zones. Some of you may feel that competing for drops from powerful enemies in the open world is suboptimal in crowded areas. And you're right. When lots of desperate groups are all attacking the same enemy, there's a small chance that those groups will see drops. Boom. There you go. Right there. The more people doing the events, the more people doing the content, the lower your drop rates go. Which means, if you want to be optimal, get a good group of five. Get get a solid core group and go run that stuff. If you want to maximize your chances of getting high watermark increases in a more controlled environment, expeditions are a great way to do it. Garden of Genesis and Lazarus, Lazarus instrumentality are full of elite monsters to fight and bosses guarantee that you'll get an increase every time they drop a gear item for you. I love it. Beautiful system. Thank you. We know that tuning orbs for the, those expeditions are particularly time-consuming to craft right now, so we're in the process of adjusting expedition tuning orb crafting requirements. We expect to release an update to the crafting requirements for tuning orbs sometime in November after we have vetted the changes, so keep an eye on those update notes. We also heard your feedback on the high watermark system and are tracking and fixing some issues with the final stages of the high watermark system, the 591 plus items, and creatures dropping high watermark increase Increasing items the way we intended. I love it. Thank you so much for explaining your high watermark system. That is incredibly valuable information um, to basically let people know. Uh, what I would probably tell people, frankly, myself, is farm level 61 zones until you're around 530. Five, f farm level f uh, 62 zones until you're maybe around 540 farm 50 or 63 zones until you're maybe around 550 and from 550 on i'd maybe recommend you know exclusively looking at those 64 plus zones i think that would be your easiest way of going about it now if you have buddies that are you know maybe ahead of you or whatever that are already doing the the 64s you're gonna get a great chance on those drops as well so you can go join them feel free it's just gonna be a harder location that's all we are almost done. We've made it to the last set of, uh, <laughs> we've made it to the last set of paragraphs. This is the longest I've ever had to talk for any of these. And you know what? I'm happy because this is a great post. This is great communication. This is great updates on your guys' thoughts, what's happening behind the scenes, what you guys are thinking about. I love it. And, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You guys have had a lot of bad publicity, a lot of bad bugs, a lot of game-breaking problems that you're dealing with. I understand that it's probably been extremely stressful to, for, for Amazon. Um, and frankly, a lot of them are, are warranted, right? You guys did not do an amazing job with, with the coding. And there are a lot of bugs and problems that should have been fixed before a game release kind of thing, right? So I'm not trying to say this as, an, as a, you're doing a great job all around. Everything's, you know, sunshine and rainbows. I'm saying you guys got hit. You took a lot of punches and instead of just, instead of just not, you know, tapping out and being like, yo, we're done or we don't want to talk to you guys. You guys are coming back and you're swinging and you're saying, look, we're here to stay. We're going to make this a good game. That's what I'm complimenting. That's what I'm appreciating. Thank you. We've been listening to your feedback on ways we can improve our communication with you. This post, which hopefully you've gotten this far into, is an expression. I got this far. And anybody watching that's this far, you did it. You deserve a medal or ice cream or chicken wings or something. 
is an expression of our desire to do a better job of communicating about the issues and feedback we receive from our passionate community. We are making several improvements. First, we are introducing the Dev Corner, a place where we will work uh, with the design leads to provide greater insights into how various aspects of New World work. Additionally, we have made the commitment to post a notice every Tuesday on the status of our weekly patches to let you know how it looks when it might ship. Beautiful. I love it. So you guys can expect my review or, or reading of these um, every Tuesday then. Um, that will basically go over the patches. Um, for every weekly update, we will continue uh, we will continue provide mega threads, continue to provide mega threads for feedback and bug reporting. We are also working very hard to be more actively communicative and pres and present here in the forums on a daily basis. We want to continue to make further improvements, especially on how our known issues list and bug tracker work. We hear your feedback and we'll continue and we keep working with you to improve and we will keep working with you to improve. We appreciate your patience, support and understanding while we address these issues and continue to improve our communication with our community on issues moving forward. Additionally, we will provide regular updates on key issues moving forward. See you in Eternum. We've read it all. We did it. We read everything. Honestly, um, this post, this whole post, to me, is is beautiful. It's icing on the cake. It makes me happy. It makes me excited for New World. Thank you, guys. Thank you, devs. I appreciate you guys. Um, and this is great to see. R really. Like, the, the patch notes, the looking forward with war stuff, the looking backwards and talking about everything you've been dealing with. Like, this is beautiful. I mean, th this is fantastic thank you this is great for your community image it's great for the community in general that we get to interact and, and see what's going on like i hope you stick to your word and i hope that you will continue to do posts like this and keep us updated and let us know because frankly this is incredible and i'm just i'm so happy you're doing it <laughs> like i'm just i'm happy like three days ago i was looking at you guys and i was like holy cow everything is silent there's a million bugs like 99 percent of the game modes aren't fun because there's a million glitches going on and now like i'm three days later and i am so hopeful and happy and i'm just like filled with joy and you're changing all these bugs and i'm just like yeah let's go amazon let's go um Guys, I'm interested to know, you know, after reading all this with me, after going through, I don't know how long this is. This is probably well over an hour, though. After all of this, what are your guys' thoughts? What do you think are the biggest things? What what insights did you find most uh, important or, or most beneficial or or most interesting? Or what did you enjoy? What do you want to see moving forward? Um, honestly, for me, they keep all this up, and the only thing left, the only thing left for me, you got to release patches that don't break your game anymore. You got to release patches and release notes and whatever you want to do that don't introduce new bugs. That's that's the last the last check on the list is execution. You got to execute what you're saying. That's that's all it is. Everything else you're nailing it. Thank you so much. That's going to end the video. This has been a super long video. I'm aware of that. But frankly, I wanted to read this whole thing. I wanted to have my kind of first time. I read like the client transfer and full server status thing. And then I, and I, some of this was kind of copy and paste from a few other things. Um, but frankly, this was my first read through with you guys. And this was my take, my opinions on everything. Uh, I'm really interested to, to know your guys in the comments. Honestly, I think this is a good one for discussion. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys on YouTube for hanging out with me. Thanks for chilling, listening to my voice for, for over an hour. That's wild that you guys choose to do that. Um, as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you in Eternum.